All right. We're going to move on to the presentation portion of tonight's meeting. Um, item A is a student staff community recognition. Yeah. Okay, we have three um, staff members being recognized this evening. Um, the first one, do you want me to read and then call up? Okay. Um, the first one is Ryan McKinney. Um, Ryan McKinney is always going above and beyond to be to bring programs and projects to our middle school. Um, most recently, he was awarded the Herb Cole Teacher Fellowship. He will be awarded $6,000 and plans to use this to purchase some fat tire bikes and build more bike racks. He is working on securing additional funding um, to purchase a class set of bikes. Currently, he is working with small group of students on painting a mural they designed for the side of the garage at the bike park. The nomina nominating um, an administrator is Missy Geese Regan. So congratulations, Mr. McKinney. Okay. Um, our second staff member is Susie Olson Rosenbush. If you would come forward with Mr. Schurz. He is the administration um, nomination and Susie Olson Rosenbush continues to go the extra mile for her students, both in class and in FFA. She has worked hard to provide additional opportunities to learn and grow while keeping safety at the forefront of her decisions. Susie has continued to provide students with opportunities and experiences while staying within the COVID restrictions, which has been extremely difficult at times. <laughs> Don't we all know that? <laughs> so um, congratulations, Susie Olson Rosenbush. Um, applause, please. Congratulations. And the third member of our staff this evening is Rhonda Carlton, and she is nominated by Administrator Mr. Pete Hopke. Rhonda Carlton has a very active and supportive member of the SES team. As the 4K coordinator, she has led the team with revising instruction and facilitating lesson planning. As the early childhood special ed teacher, she has gone the extra mile with scheduling paraprofessional support when students' needs have changed and when staff members have been out due to illness or quarantine. She has been very flexible, supportive, and encouraging during this challenging year. Congratulations. It never ceases to amaze me, um, the amazing staff that we have in this district. All right, we are going to move on to item B. Um, update from Sarah Hamilton, the district nurse. You wanna, all right. Sometimes I don't hop up unless I know you all have questions, um, but oh, okay. you did get your last update on Wednesday mm -hmm. and usually I send you one on Monday and have one ready for you in paper today, but I wasn't technically in my office today. So. <laughs> okay. um, Numbers are similar to what you see on the Wednesday. There hasn't been any major change. I think it's important for you to know that. Um, and there was a lot of information in, that I kind of gave to you on this last report. Mm -hmm. I do have printed copies, but it was given ahead of time. Are there any questions or? Does anybody have any questions for um, Sarah? No? Our numbers are looking really nice right now, and that's okay. very nice. <laughs> that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we are going to receive and place that information on file. For, for the record, for people who are watching, those numbers were zero, correct? Thank you. Did everyone hear that? Um, sure, that would be that would be great. Just so that everybody out there watching tonight, they. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, so <laughs> right now we have no active cases. That means no students or staff have COVID. Um, and we have a limited number of people excluded, which means they're excluded because they're getting tested or they're symptomatic 
um, or a family member where they've been somehow exposed to having COVID. Um, last Wednesday, it was seven. I'm not going to give you an update today okay. because I don't have the exact number. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you very much. Again, we will receive and place that information on file. All right. So item C, we're moving on to the referendum um, project update. Oh. And we have Lance tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Uh, general construction update. Contract execution. So we've sent and, and uh, created all the contracts. They've all been sent out for signature by the uh, uh, different vendors. Um, so we'll be receiving about 50% of those as long as well as we've been um, verifying the insurance certificates and bond information. So we're looking forward in the next week to finalize that information. Um, budget has been reconciled and updated with the uh, procurement information from the last bid packages. So we have that updated and um, we've started our scheduling of our weekly meetings, um, which will be hold, holding on Tuesday afternoons for the administrative team and Tuesday morning with the construction team. Um, next item we're really working on is plan grid. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, plan grid is our construction software we'll be using throughout the project. So we've loaded up a lot of the plans in there and invited all the contractors. So there's some IT support where we'll be working hard to get them all into that program and uh, everybody ready to go when we are ready to break dirt. Break dirt. Um, we've also, the main reason of getting plan grid going as soon as possible is for the submittals. So contract submittals, contractor submittals. Um, we want to make sure we get all the long lead time items ordered um, and as soon as possible so that we can get them on site for installation. Um, we're also working with SDS architects. So we've been through the Wisconsin Department of Safety Professional Services DISPIS review of the construction plans for the school district. There was some feedback from DISPIS and there's some minor, minor plan modifications that we've um, that SDS will be making and resubmitting, and we have a meeting with DISPIS for that finalization also. So everything on track there. And um, look ahead, it's really the focus of the next couple weeks are the finalization of the contracts, the implementation of the plan grid uh, software, and the weekly coordination and uh, contractor scheduling for construction. So we wanna get and start finalizing our uh, summer construction schedules. Any questions on the current there progress? Any, any questions? Okay. Um, nope. And we will then I'll move on to the next items um, discussing the uh, uh, elementary school, middle school abatement contract. So we did do a procurement yes, for that, um, and we received bids, and we'll be looking for approval at that at the next full board meeting. Um, I didn't print out the tabulation of that. Um, okay. The bids came in. Um, very, very good um, for the school district. Um, and the, the spread is very well. So we have an apparent low bidder that we've qualified. Um, and we're looking at asbestos removal services. Um, numbers wise, um, the bid range is uh, at about $175,000 for the full abatement. So we're pretty much where we expected um, where we're sitting and we're kind of moving forward um, with that planning of the abatement since that'll be one of the keystone parts of the construction project as far as scheduling so we'll be looking for approval later on this month formally uh, bleachers i'm sorry playground equipment um we've been working on procurement patches for playground equipment and reaching out to different vendors uh, we've narrowed down a vendor that will be looking for approval and we are going to be looking for a not to exceed contract amount of 150,000 for renovation of the playgrounds and um, we'll feel, feel pretty firmly um, with the uh, selection of that vendor moving forward. So we'll be looking for approval later on in the month. And then bleachers, um, oh, I'm sorry, commissioning agent. We've also engaged uh, uh, different commissioning agents, commissioning of the HVAC systems to be and efficiently as possible with all the equipment. Um, and we'll have those, we'll, we have a procurement package out for that. So we'll have those numbers for the next board meeting um, for final approval. And then bleachers, um, has been difficult for us to get bleacher vendors this far north. Um, so Brad and I have been working very hard on that and we did, did narrow down and finally reach out to a bleacher vendor. They will be here this week actually to um, do some walkthroughs and put that procurement proposal together for review at the next board meeting. So everything on track for procurements 
um, we should have um, all those finalization and numbers for the next uh, full board meeting for approval. Okay, so will we re be receiving? Okay, so just so the board knows, item C, D, E, F, and G, we will be receiving that information um, prior to the next board meeting so that we can go ahead and vote on that information. So it will be our responsibility if you have questions once you receive that information that you reach out to get your questions answered. And, and I will send along the uh, abatement bid tab along with that information as well. Okay, great. Is there any other questions for Lance? No? All right, excellent. Okay, thank you. We are going to receive and place all of that information on file at this time. Once we receive the additional information, then um, we can review it. All right. All right, we're going to move on to item H, discuss the 2021-2022 CESA 11 shared services contract. Mrs. Grindel. Uh, per the memo, this is a standard approval for our shared services contract. We did add one service, uh, additional service for next year, and that is the uh, ESSER fund uh, cons consultation. And what that's going to be is we do know that we are we will receive some ESSER two and three funds. Along with that comes some data analysis and compliance that needs to be done. And it's always just good to have a set of eyes on it. regarding that shared services contract. Is that new CARES, is that just a temporary one year deal? Um, it'd be for the duration of um, the, the, for the duration of the time that we have to use the monies, which would be through September of 2024. Okay, thanks. So I would anticipate next year, possibly the year after. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, do I have consensus to move this to the regular board meeting? Yes, yes. everyone? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And moving on to item I, discuss the 2021-2022 CESA 11 co-op health insurance renewal. Pretty state straightforward. Uh, we are looking at a 3% increase for insurance next year. Very Thank reasonable. You. Um, we're happy with that number, so we're just looking for approval for the board uh, to move it to the board meeting. Is there any questions regarding that information that was received? Okay, do we have consensus to move that to the regular board meeting? Yes. 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 Mr. Melton? Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. And we're moving on to item J discuss the 2021 2022 staffing. The board was given a list of certified staff contracts to review. Uh, we're looking for approval to move those forward so that we can disperse those contracts by May 15th. Um, as stated in the memo, in the, within those contracts, there's a 1.23% CPI increase along with a step movement that's all been factored into the 21-22 budget. Okay, is there any questions? Okay, do I have consensus to move that to the regular board meeting? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, and item K, you're you're up again. <laughs> Discuss the 2021-2022 preliminary budget. Yep. So we like to get the budget in front of the a preliminary budget in front of you guys in April. A lot of um, outstanding. Uh, I wouldn't say outstanding. A lot of moving parts uh, currently that we're waiting on at the state level, but we feel like we have a pretty good grasp on it. So you can see that we've broken down the expenses by what we call object codes, salaries, benefits, are large ticket items. Um, and then again, just the revenues in total for Fund 10. And you can see that uh, we're, we are looking at a balanced budget for 21-22. Okay, so is there any questions? Okay, so we're looking to um, adopt the preliminary budget and move this to the regular board meeting, right? So we'd move it to the regular board, board meeting, meeting to for, a, adoption. for adoption. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Correct wording. <laughs> so we're moving that to the regular board meeting for adoption. And all yes. consensus, thank you. Yes. Yes. All right. And we're moving on to item L, discuss the 2021 Chromebook purchase with Gears Funds. So we were given uh, what is called GEARS funds through the COVID Relief Act, and that was a state level uh, funding that we were given. And uh, in working with 
Mr. Miller decided that the best way to spend those funds would be to replenish our Chromebooks that uh, we currently have due to usage and just the necessity to have more. So we'll be using the GEARS funds to purchase. How many? Six, say that again. 645. Okay. All right. Is there any questions regarding that? And that those funds would cover the entire amount of yes. the stated? Correct. Is there any additional questions? Okay. Then um, I'd like consensus to move that to the regular board meeting. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. And we're moving along here. Item M. Um, update on the 2021 SHS prom plan. Mr. Schurz. Start out with questions that you might have. Uh, the document that I gave you with uh, the three advisors for uh, prom is uh, Mrs. Hines, which is Ms. Uh, Paige Gertner originally, um, Aaron Birch, and uh, Greta Lynn. And they've spent quite a bit of time trying to uh, flush out something that um, might interest students in something we can do and staying keeping COVID in mind and things like that because we do want students to have those experiences. Uh, the prom committee consisted of about 15 juniors that were interested in being involved in that process. They've met for the last uh, couple of weeks, tried to flush out what they might like to do. And uh, at this point, um, they're not interested in moving forward with what we have, um, but we wanna leave that open because uh, you know, if they were to uh, change their minds and, and, or, or feel like uh, they'd like something along those lines. Uh, the one thing that they wanted to do is something similar that we, that we did in homecoming and that's uh, crown the king and queen at school at some point on that Friday beforehand, that kind of thing. And their major concerns, uh, one of the concerns was the fact that they didn't want um, a senior to end up testing positive and missing graduation, that kind of thing. So they've you know, thought about it pretty extensively. And, and again, at this point, they uh, did not want us to move forward, but we will leave it open. Is okay, so, so this plan that you have here can be done if, in fact, they want it, but at this time that is sure. not going to be um, coming to fruition. Is that correct? correct? Okay. All right. Is there any questions regarding that? Will there, will there be a time that we will know that this is yes or no? Is there a certain point that there, a decision will be made? Or this, is this is just information I believe that Mr. Schurz is giving us. This is not, a, this is not something that we need to... Vote on, correct? That's, that's correct. That's, that's yeah. correct. So, just no, for, maybe or maybe now. not. Just uh, updates. Just an update. Periodic yep. updates when okay. situations change. New information is available. Well, then we'll, we would be informed of those things. Okay. My question doesn't mean anything. Oh. I wanted to. I was wondering why, if we allow juniors and seniors to take sophomores and freshmen as their date, mm -hmm. Why were we going to exclude them in Grand Mark? The, the reason being in the situation, we were trying to keep numbers down, and, and we wanted to make sure juniors and seniors had the experience knowing that freshmen and sophomores will at some point. And again, that's, that's part of uh, the process as we flushed it out, trying to you know, have something and making sure that you know, we're, uh, we're not doing something to uh, create a situation where we can't uh, continue to... Uh, educate and keep our school going. So that's kind of the primary reason behind it. And that was one of the reasons why we excluded outside guests as well. Just so knowing full well that when we're done doing whatever we were gonna do, they were welcome to do whatever their families chose to do at that point too. Okay. All right, well, thank you for that information. We're going to receive and place that on file. And so you might as well just stay, turn around. turn around and then come right back. <laughs> because now we're going back. to, we're going to move on to item N, Mr. Schurz, which would be the update on the class of 2021 SHS and WCAS graduation ceremony plans. And as you see from the paperwork, the ceremonies will be very similar. Uh, the addition that we're trying to do 
difference from, well, there's a couple differences from last year to this year. One being that we're going to try to do it on the right date, which is great. That would be fabulous. <laughs> we're going to try to make sure we're all the seniors are healthy to get there. Mm -hmm. so we've offered them that opportunity to be able to go, if they're concerned about it, to do virtual uh, at some point in there. So, again, they don't miss their graduation. Uh, we added a couple more guests. To, you know, for, we know that families sometimes get larger. So, uh, again, we're going to, you know, create a situation using the gym and social distance. So it'll be a very similar ceremony to last year uh, with the same kind of uh, requirements, I guess. And we have music this year. We do have music. <laughs> so we will have the select choir, is that right? Yeah. Select choir along with Mrs. Linton. So, okay. Is there any questions regarding this information? So this is what your plan will be, and this is what you're going to implement. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. I do have a oh. question. Okay. I was wondering if there's any way that we'd have the room to move that to six guests. That would give two parents and two grandparents in those family units. I'm just thinking that puts some families in a difficult position where just or the outside is not a not a possibility outside is probably not a possibility due to the fact that you know as well as i do the weather we have no idea uh the, when we stretched it to four so basically what we have the gym floor is is parceled out and stretching it to four really put us at maximum of being able to do the social distancing in the process um and again, we added the live stream to make sure that if there were other guests, because no matter what we do, just like last year, you know, there was a little stress on families that were traveling from distances, but everyone in the end understood and, and ended up being pretty successful. So we did, you know, do the measuring and, and tried to make sure we could accommodate the maximum, and that's kind of where we, you know, we were, I guess, most concerned is immediate parents. Um, had, weren't excluded in some way. And, uh, understanding that there is no perfect solution. Again, hopefully next year everything is going. You know, mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think everybody in this room, no matter whether you're a parent or a board member or a teacher or admin, know that the difficulties that the students have faced in the last two years um, going through all of this and missing out on on you know peak things that should be a part of their senior experience so whatever we can do to get it to be the most normal way you know i think you know we have we have done and you have done a phenomenal job at being able to accomplish that in these crazy crazy times um and normally this is not a board decision so um you know at this point um i'm what I'm understanding is Mr. Schurz is giving us this update um, so that it's out of consideration so that we and the folks at home and everybody knows what the plans are for the 2021 senior class. So is there is there any other further questions then? Okay, thank you. We're going to receive and place that on file. All right. Um, we're going to move on to item O, which is discuss the update to the 2020-21 school calendar. Dr. Aslan. All right. So we're before you with a recommended change to the current year school calendar. Uh, the situation is our, the school year is currently slated to end on uh, June 10th, which is a Thursday. Uh, as we've had some discussion at the administrative level and also discussion uh, that you heard Lance Gregorich talk a little bit about the very, very tight timeline for some of the construction projects. Uh, we come forward with you to a recommend, with a recommendation saying that uh, a remote learning Wednesday on the 9th of June is probably uh, not warranted as uh, that will... Uh, will be on the eve of the conclusion of the school year. So what the recommendation would be is that we make June 9th a face-to-face -face day, Thursday, June 10th, be an early release day for students. And just a reminder of what an early release day looks like, students would be on hand in the morning, they'd eat the noon meal, and then they would be dismissed from school. 
It's also the staff's last day of school. They'd have a half a day to wrap things up and we would have contractors on site and the, the primary uh, project that uh, is the greatest concern within the timeline right now is the uh, abatement of uh, hazardous material in the small gym in the middle school. So preparing that for demolition. So that's the recommendation. Again, recap, go to a full face-to-face -face day on Wednesday, June 9th, make Thursday, June 10th, uh, a student day, a half day, early release day for students, last day for staff, and we conclude the 2020-21 school year on that note. Okay. Is there any questions for Dr. Aslan? Okay. Do I have consensus to move this to the regular board meeting? Yes. Yes? Okay. Mr. Milton? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Um, we're going to move on now to item P. Um, normally, we don't have action items on the Committee of the Whole Agenda, but because of the time-sensitive um, nature of this one, um, you all received information um, regarding the district recommendation to consider the elementary um, principal contract. You all had that for your review. Um, and so what I'm asking for this evening is to a motion to approve the hiring of the elementary principal um, school position. I would so move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and do I have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any discussion? Any? Okay. Could I have a roll call vote for that, please? Egan Benson. Yes. Michelle Jackson? Yes. Kate McKinney? Yes. Daniel Melton? Yes. Deb Olson? Yes. Arthur Furs? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to introduce the new um, elementary school principal, Mr. Chris Berghammer. And he is with us tonight. If you would like to um, stand up, please, or step forward if you have anything you'd like to say to the board, we welcome you to the district. I'm Chris Berghammer, and I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to joining the Spooner team. Thank you. Great. Welcome aboard, Mr. Welcome. Berghammer. Thank you, All right. And we're moving on to um, item Q. Um, consider the head boys basketball coach contract. Um, Mr. Schurz. You look like you're in the headlights. I was going to say you. <laughs> I would like to uh, recommend uh, Josh Fiesel uh, for our next head boys basketball coach. Josh is, uh, to say he's excited is an understatement. Um, gives us a, a great opportunity to uh, really put a lot of our uh, sports under a very similar umbrella with uh, all of the things that go on throughout the year, including our weight training and in our uh, you know, physical preparedness for our students. So we're excited for that, and I know he is, and that would be my recommendation. Okay. And again, we are doing this as an action item tonight because of the time sensitivity. Um, so I would like a motion to approve um, Mr. Josh Fiesel as the head boys basketball coach. I will make coach. that motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Could I have a roll call vote as well, please? Yes. Yes. Kate McKinney? Yes. Daniel Melton? Yes. Deb Olson? Yes. Arthur Schurz? Yes. Paul Jackson? Yes. All right. Welcome, Mr. Fiesel, to yet another <laughs> sports season for you. We really appreciate all of the things that you um, have put forth for the district. All right. We're going to move on now to item R which is discuss the DAPES um, District Administrator Performance Evaluation System timeline. Um, so we, we have gone through, we met with Amy Bendis, um, and we've gone through that inf with that information. Um, what we're hoping, and um, I'm looking at my notes, I'm sorry, is to um, do the timeline from starting May 1st of 2021 
through April of 2022 for that district administrator evaluation or the administration evaluation process as recommended my, by um, Amy at the time we did the training. Um, because of the things that are going on um, at this point in the district, um, I believe that we that would be a good start. We would be able to process the information that we have been all given. Um, if there's any questions or we need additional training or anything, that would give us that entire year to be able to go ahead and be able to efficiently and effectively do those evaluations. So um, is there any discussion regarding that? Anybody else have any input regarding um, that information? No? Seems to okay. make sense. Okay. Um, do I have consensus then to move this to the regular board meeting? Yes. Okay, yes. All right. Okay. So um, then we're going to move on to item S which is discussing the 2020-2021 district administration evaluation considerations. Um, with what we had just talked about, and with that being said, um, my recommendation um, to this board is to make a one-time exception to not do a district administration evaluation this year um, and move it forward to next year for that consideration. So is there any discussion regarding that? Okay. All right. If that is the case, then I would like to um, move that move that to the regular board meeting. <laughs> move that forward to the regular board meeting. So everybody okay with that? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then we're going to move on to item T, which is the 30, 60, 90 day planning cycle. Everybody has received that information. Have you've had time to review? Is there any questions regarding the 30, 60 day timeline or planning cycle? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Then um, I would like to receive and place that information on file. All right, we're moving on to item U. We're not going all the way to the end of the alphabet. Darn. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just trying to lighten the mood a little bit today. All right. Um, item U is the financial update, Mrs. Grindel. Any questions for the February financial statement or the April vouchers that the board has at this time? No. Okay. okay. All right. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, I'd like a consensus to move that to the regular board meeting. Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Yes. All right, and we're looking at item V, approval of the vouchers. Everybody had a chance to look them over. Any questions? Okay. All right. Um, if there's no questions, I would like consensus to move to the regular board meeting as part of the consent agenda, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And if that's everything, I'd like motion to adjourn. So moved. I second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Yeah. I, 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 you know, you should make the motion.